how high can EVF hematocrit get before needing to donate remove blood on TRT? Reference uh, 1.40 to 1.50. The question we get very often. Yeah, um, the question that I think we've all probably answered a million gajillion times. Um, but it's a good question because it probably comes up on everyone's radar at least once, um, whether it's a legitimate reason for it to come up or, or not. Um, but it will get inevitably what should be, fucking damn well, should be reviewed. Um, at least every year when you're on CRT, you should have your red blood cell count reviewed. So um, it's important to know what's going on. So it, it completely, I think the answer to this question, it completely depends on who you talk to. Um, whoever's giving you the advice is going to impact the answer to this question. So the way that I look at it, and this is one of the big overarching kind of practices that I have in terms of how CRT is done, is that if... You, you can't put a, a dose or amount of testosterone into a man that can't tolerate it. So if you've got someone who's, let's say, 19 or, or 20 or 21 years old, younger than the guys I work with, but let's say that, that someone's working with them on their treatment, and they've never had high testosterone to begin with, they were obese during puberty, maybe they had some kind of you know injury to the testicles or something like that, but never went through full development, they're currently obese. So this is an extreme example, but I'm using it to illustrate a point. So... If you take that guy and just jack his free testosterone up to like, let's say a 50 or a 1500 in Australian units, so double the top of the reference range, a number that a lot of guys need to get to. If you jack him straight there, he is not going to be able to fucking tolerate that amount of testosterone because there is no way in hell that his body in that metabolic inflamed state, where even if he did have the hardware to make it, it would be completely and utterly suppressed because of all the stressful processes going on in his body. You can't dysregulate the body's rhythms like that and, and, and work with it in a way that you're, you're working against the body. So you have to work with the body. So if you've got someone who, is, who, who has low testosterone and they, they're not able to regain their optimum amount for whatever reason, and they're currently not in a state of good health, the amount of testosterone they can tolerate is going to be very different See, the amount of testosterone they can tolerate and do well with if they're like eight, nine percent body fat, looking after themselves well, sleeping well, exercising every day, doing all those, those things right. So we, we have to work with the body to a degree. And it's only when you work against the body that you start to get problems. So this is one of the problems that you'll get is your hematocrit will jack through the roof because your red blood cell count is going up to beyond a level that your body can naturally uh, naturally should be tolerating. So you have to be doing something wrong for the body to jack its somatocrit so high that you have a problem. So if this does come to this point, it means that your dose is too high, usually for how overweight you are. That's usually the issue. But usually the problem isn't that your dose is too high. The problem is that you've got too much body fat. Um, or the problem is a bad protocol, like inconsistent injections, um, or all kinds of other things that could be causing issues. So, you know, you want to be injecting frequently. You want to make sure that your diet's good. You want to make sure that you're looking after yourself right. You want to make sure that you're doing everything right. But your, your hematocrit could become part of a problematic cascade if you're obese and you have high, you're, you're jacking your testosterone level too high. Yeah. So when, I don't think there's a number that causes problems though, but there's definitely a point where you'll get symptoms of it being too high. I've only had it happen a couple of times and it was both guys who were obese. But yeah, if, if, if it gets into like the 0.54 to 0.57 and you've got symptoms like your face is turning into a turnip and you're getting problems, yeah, it, it can definitely be an issue. But it doesn't happen very often. When, it, when this is being done right, you're doing, you know, two, two, three injections per week or daily injections and you're looking after yourself well and you're moving your health in the right direction, even if your health isn't perfect now, but you're moving in the right direction you shouldn't be having problems with uh, elevated red blood cell count. So for by and large, it's not going to be an issue. The only time that you're going to have problems is if your health is out of whack or if your protocol is just way off.